With a population of over 600,000, Stuttgart has to deal with the same problems as all the world's cities. Stuttgart too has spread out during the past hundred years, well beyond its traditional borders. In doing so, it has continually exploited its natural environment and progressively imperiled the quality of life of its citizens. In 1830, Stuttgart was still very much an idyllic small town, set among meadows and vineyards. Today, it's a vast expanse of buildings crisscrossed by traffic-filled street canyons. Under certain atmospheric conditions, a blanket of particulate and gaseous pollutants covers the city, producing a notorious heat island, and resulting in an unhealthy baking oven climate. Stuttgart, the largest city in southwestern Germany and the capital of Baden-Württemberg region, has always been a particularly critical case as far as its microclite is concerned. The city center lies in a basin formed by the surrounding hill. Temperature measurements in the outlying countryside, on the basin slopes halfway up, and at street level in Stuttgart Central District show temperature differences up to 6 or 7 degrees centigrade. In general, cities are 1 to 2 degrees warmer than the surrounding countryside. In the city, buildings, concrete and pavement absorb more solar radiation. In hot summers, the enormous heat generated can be seen above the rooftops. Cities are warmer also because a lot of heat escapes from chimneys during the winter heating period and because the houses are often inadequately insulated. Still another reason can be seen in the fact that traffic and industry generate additional heat. Airflow patterns play a key role. Frictional drag caused by the collision with buildings can reduce wind velocity by up to 75 percent. When this happens, there is a real danger of insufficient ventilation in the urban landscape. Equally important in this connection are vertical air movements. In a thermal inversion, temperatures increase with height. When this happens over a city, heavy cold air near the ground is pulled upward by a city's own warmer air and rises even higher in the presence of solar radiation forming an almost impenetrable barrier that strongly inhibits atmospheric mixing and leads to an often harmful concentration of automobile exhaust fumes and other pollutants. This leads to inflammation of the mucous membranes, respiratory illness and even chronic bronchitis. These are the general factors influencing urban climates everywhere. These are factors which we can hardly change. But something can be done about detail improvements. Stuttgart is a case in point. For many years, Stuttgart has involved climatologists in urban planning. Their advice has given practical consideration in the plan process wherever possible. This cooperation between urban planners and climatologists has made possible a better planned fight against air pollution than has generally been the case elsewhere. The first step was to ascertain where bad air was produced in quantity, where it was concentrated, and where it was not dispersed. It was also important to determine fresh air flows. This knowledge made it clear what steps had to be taken and what mistakes had to be avoided. This map makes it clear that fresh air flows into the Stuttgart Basin via the slopes of the surrounding hills. It can also be seen that the hillsides have been heavily built up in the past. All these hillside buildings tend to impede and even absorb the downflow of fresh air so that too little of it reaches the bottom of the basin. The mistakes of the past have brought an important lesson here. Building permits are no longer issued in Stuttgart for hillside construction. Community well-being has been put ahead of individual interests. A special fact in the Stuttgart Natural Basin, the numerous canyon-like natural indentations in the surrounding hillsides. These provide a fresh air potential often underestimated by laymen. During the night, cool fresh air reaches the city through each of the indentations. This one, for instance, provides from 8 to 40 million cubic meters of fresh air per hour, an enormous amount. 
Further building construction has also been prohibited in these natural fresher channels. The term channel, by the way, is apt, for these natural openings in the Stuttgart Basin's wall not only produce fresh air, they direct it down into a valley, very much as the flow of water is channeled by a river. What this means in practical terms is clear enough. It is folly to build high rises in these natural channels, for high rises act as dams, stopping the flow of air. Stuttgart possesses its own negative examples in this respect. A voluminous high rise was put up right in the middle of such a fresher channel. At the foot of the vineyard covered Kriegsberg Hill, a hospital was erected, despite the wide barrier thereby presented to fresh air flows. Then the university put up two even higher buildings right behind the hospital. To the park, the flow of fresh air is at the very least impeded. This tall white box forms a serious obstacle. But it is not enough to prevent further obstruction to natural airflow patterns. Rather, whenever possible, fresh air channels must be widened and lengthened. The street is one of the three long fresh air channels crossing the Stuttgart Basin. At the recommendation of Stuttgart's climatologists, the originally planned width of 28 meters was extended to 48 meters to provide a wider path for fresh air to the center. But the widening is pointless if it is accompanied by greater traffic volumes. This can be prevented by demarcations, wide shoulders and rows of trees. From a climatological point of view, the creation and enlargement of urban vegetation is one of the most urgent tasks of urban planning. Trees and parks are vital for the improvement of a poor urban climate. For every park and every single tree produces fresh air. This in turn gives rise to microflows of fresh air. Trees and parks have a further important function as dust filters. This has been proved by Stuttgart's climatologist. Fifty dust collectors have been installed at various locations within the city's borders. They are continually monitored using the Bauhof method. A significantly lower concentration of particulate pollutants near trees and parks has been demonstrated. Another problem, which might at first appear to be of slight significance, would be mentioned in connection with vegetation, namely, how to cool off hot parking spaces. Infrared photographs of Stuttgart contain numerous red spots scattered around the city. These are caused by the warm surfaces of public and private parking spaces. Parking lots were formerly covered with concrete or asphalt, and they absorbed so much solar radiation that even the nights were not long enough for them to cool off. Several tens of thousands of parking spaces added up to a significant factor. More and more parking spaces are now being covered with perforated stone slabs in whose perforations grass can grow. Moreover, the underlying soil can absorb and retain rainwater for seepage and later evaporation. A tremendous number of climatologically sound microsurfaces have been gained in this way. Another area where detailed work has been going on in Stuttgart is the so-called wet roof. The entire surface area of a flat roof remains wet following a rainfall. This water can then evaporate, and evaporation means a drop in temperature and fresh air for the city. A similar effect is obtained by means of roof gardens, which also improve the aesthetic appearance of a city built of stone, concrete and glass. Another measure was the introduction of so-called detached facades. These are kind of second skin of the outer walls of buildings which create an air buffer. Such buildings are cooler in summer and warmer in winter, so they give off less heat. An important part about all these measures is that builders are not free to take them or leave them as they choose. Rather, they are, wherever necessary, written into and made mandatory by local development plans. These small measures are all very important. The larger problems require similar action. Stuttgart's Kaltenthal-Heslach district 
shows how new fresh air sources can be made available by redesigning an entire landscape. The blue arrows indicate how much fresh air now flows to this valley. This air used to flow in the opposite direction. To reverse the direction of flow, the meadows of Glemsal Valley were forested and thus sealed off for near ground air flows. All the fresh air arising in the Berenze Hollow is now forced to flow into the Heslach district. Here in this suburb, the fresh air is urgently needed for the more efficient expulsion of bad air. But the biggest problem in Stuttgart and elsewhere is preventing pollutants from entering the atmosphere in the first place. The main line of attack here is via energy policies. Industries that are still burning coal or oil are being encouraged to convert to clean primary energy sources, electricity, natural gas or distant heating. Public agencies and institutions have set a good example in Stuttgart. The Technical University, the State Theatre, the Main Post Office, various ministries and hospitals and other public buildings have already been put on cleaner energy sources. And since home heating consumes almost as much coal and oil as industry, entire residential neighborhoods in Stuttgart have been converted to distant heating. In order to make this clean energy available at an acceptable price, the city of Stuttgart has installed an underground natural gas container capable of storing 20 million cubic meters, the capacity of 60 conventional above-ground storage tanks. An early and very visible sign of Stuttgart's environmental awareness, the smokestacks at the two municipal power plants. These are 160 and 180 meters high, much higher than the law required at the time they were built. For some time now, the chimneys of private firms too have been built higher than legally required. Laws now exist to enforce essential air hygiene standards. The baden württemberg State Building Ordinance, the Federal Anti-Pollution Act, as well as other federal laws take environmental protection into account. This body of law is the principal instrument now in use in Stuttgart. Thanks to an order issued by Stuttgart's Lord Mayor back in 1951, climatologists must be consulted by all municipal agencies whose action can affect the city's climate. This consultation is mandatory and begins during the planning stage. The advice of the climatologists must be respected. They have a real impact on building activity. A good example for other cities, the exception rather than the rule in the Federal Republic of Germany. The result of this theoretical and practical work is that despite a high concentration of economic activity, despite considerable public and private building activity, despite high traffic levels, and last but not least, despite all the mistakes of the past, Stuttgart is one of the cleanest cities in the Federal Republic of Germany. This was only made possible in Stuttgart by a unique degree of cooperation between scientific advisors and city administration.